And now, introducing seven RP1 ratios. Now, if that doesn't get you fired up about math today, I don't know what would fire you up. Today, we are talking about ratios. Now, I have attached the standard called 7RP1. Even though it says compute unit rates, I would like to begin uh, video one with talking about ratios before we get into rates. Now, rates will be coming in uh, one of my next couple uh, of videos. A couple terms to know. Please write this down in your journals. Copy them down and define them, please. Okay, a ratio uses division to compare two numbers. Ratios can be written in three different ways. Okay, so the most common way that you have seen a ratio is a fraction. And notice the important part about this definition says that it's written as um, a comparison of two numbers. Now, if you're looking at the first fraction, you probably said to yourself, that is an improper fraction. And any time you try, uh, try to simplify that, you're going to get a mixed number. And a mixed number actually has uh, three numbers in it. So that would not fall under the definition of ratio. So in this case, it is OK to have an improper fraction as long as it is simplified to its lowest terms. Now, looking at 18 and 13, uh, the only number that goes into them evenly would be 1, and we'd get right back to 18 and 13 again. So if it was like, uh, I don't know, 10 over 5, it would reduce down to 2 over 1. Remember, you got to have the 2 and the 1 because it is a comparison of two numbers. And then the second way that you can represent a ratio is using a colon. So 18 colon 13 is read as 18 to 13. And then you can use words, um, you know, I have the word 2 in here, so T-O, 18 to 13. Sometimes you uh, see the words out of, um, etc. There's a few other examples in your textbooks that you can look up. So we have a fraction. It can be written as a, with a colon, using a colon, or sometimes we have words. second. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, in this example we have um, a chart that lists boys and girls and uh, we have seventh grade and eighth grade boys and girls and it says use the table to write the specified ratio. So in part A, this is question one, part A 8th grade girls to 8th grade boys. So when we go into our chart, let's locate the word 8th, and then we have 8th girls. And what number is represented by that? We come over here. Here are the girls. So we have a row 2, column 2, and we have the number 41. So there are 41 8th grade girls. And that is going to compare to eighth grade boys. So we're going to go to row two, column one, and we have the number 39. And then you check that to see if you can simplify it. Remember, not using a mixed number, but finding numbers that might go into 41 and 39 to just kind of simplify or reduce that down to its lowest terms. And uh, the only one that there is is 1, and 1 gets us right back to 41 over 39. So if we were to write this in three different ways, we have the fraction form, we have the colon, and we have uh, using words. Okay, the second one says, let's check out the... Um, column and row that fits into 8th grade boys. So we have 8th grade boys again. So we have row 2, column 1, and the number is 39. 
And then we have to compare that to all eighth graders. Now, all eighth graders is important. We have to combine those. So we have row two, the boys in column one and the girls in column two. And what we're going to have to do here is when we combine them, we're going to add. So we have 41 plus 39. So if you'd like to take that off to the side of your paper, and we're going to be combining those two um, parts of our chart. We have 9 plus 1 is 10, and 4 and 3 is 7, and 1 is 8. So we have 39 over 80. And then we can have 39 to 80 and 39. We could use the word to or we can use the words out of 80. And that usually works best when the first number is smaller than the second number. You'll see that I have 39 jelly beans out of 80 jelly beans that might be red or blue or whatever color you pick. All right, the final part of this uh, discussion on ratios is now working to make sure that they are in simplest form. So I, I took some basic ones. I, I took one of each type, and uh, we have the fraction of 6 over 12. And if we were to simplify that, we would go, what number goes into 6 and 12 other than 1 evenly? Well, I know that 2 goes into both of them. Is there a number bigger than that? 6 goes into both of them. Well, 6 goes into 6 how many times? 1. And 6 goes into 12 2 times. So we would have the simplest form of being 1 half. All right. The next one over is using words. So 20 to 45. All right, so I have what number goes into both of these other than 1? Well, 2 doesn't work because, well, it works for 20, but this is an odd number, so 2 won't go into 45. Uh, you know, just think of your multiples of 3, your multiples of 4. Oh, wait, how about multiples of 5? I think 5 is actually the largest number that goes into both of them, so let's do it. 5 goes into 24 times, and 5 goes into 45 9 times, and there you have it, 4 to 9, and that is simplified. Okay, the third one is using the colon. So, let's simplify this. 2 would work, but I think there's a bigger number out there. What do you think it is? Four, you're right. Okay, so four goes into eight two times, and four goes into 20 five times. And that is your simplified ratio. Now, I'm just going to, you know, I didn't put one on here, but I want to make up another example just to show you in case these numbers were, almost, you know, put in an improper way, you know, where the first number is larger than the second number. Um, let's see, what could we use here? Let's keep it pretty easy. How about uh, 10 colon 2? All right. Well, we know that 2 goes into both of them. How many times? Well, this one, 2 goes into 10 five times, and then 2 goes into 2 one time. And we know that 10 divided by 2 is 5. You know, so sometimes people like to say, okay, well, my simplified answer is 5. But if we're keeping with the definition of ratio, it's a comparison of two numbers. So we must have the 1 um, with our other number 5. So we have 5 to 1 ratio. In your journal, please define the given terms that I gave you on page 2 of this flip chart. Write down anything that you learned that might be new to you. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, please bring those questions to class and we can answer them together.